People in Chinese history, even the very wealthy and powerful, still spend time doing things that we all do today, like shouting profanities, getting snappy at one another, or talking trash. Most Chinese historical texts were written in pretty serious tones, but sometimes even the stuffy historians thought to have a little bit of fun and recorded these incidents and exchanges for all of us to read today. So in this video, I will cover 10 stories listed in chronological order of these ancient smack talks. Number 1. Early in Chinese history, during the Zhou Dynasty, the kings of Zhou had lost their authority over the individual feudal states, which fought wars against one another. Battles during this time period, known in history as the Spring and Autumn period, were very formal affairs. The fighting was largely done in chariots, with many of the charioteers members of the nobility, and there were all kinds of expectations regarding gentlemanly conduct on the battlefield. Two major rivals at this time were the state of Jin in the north and Chu in the south. In 632 BC, Jin soundly defeated Chu at the Battle of Chengpu, gaining hegemony over Chu for a whole generation. Chu sought revenge, and in 597 BC, soundly defeated Jin at the Battle of Bi. As the Jin chariots fled the battlefield, some of them became stuck in trenches. The pursuing Chu soldiers arrived on their chariots and looked over at the struggling Jin charioteers. Have you guys thought about removing those wooden planks in front of your chariots so your horses can pull you out? The Jin charioteers follow the advice and continue their escape, and the Chu chariots continue their pursuit. Some time later, the Jin horses started stalling, and the Chu charioteers again caught up. Your horses are tired. Lighten the shafts for your horses and lower your flags. The Jin charioteers again did what they were told and this time successfully made their escape. Realizing that they were now safe, the Jin soldiers finally turned around and talked back. Hey, let's be clear. We are not used to running away from battle like you guys are. Number 2. A few centuries later, China entered the Warring States period, during which the authority of the Zhou kings deteriorated even more. In 369 BC, the king of Zhou died, and all of the feudal states sent ambassadors to attend the state funeral, as was tradition. The ambassador from the state of Qi, one of the most powerful states in China at the time, walked in late to the funeral. Now, this would have been very rude even if it were to happen to any random person today, let alone an ancient king. The Zhou official overseeing the funeral got pretty upset at the Qi ambassador and called him out in front of everyone. You know, in the old days, you would have been executed for this. Words eventually got back to the king of Qi that his ambassador had been publicly humiliated by the Zhou official, and so he shouted the first insult that he could think of. While well, your mom used to be a slave girl. Number 3. The next story is a very famous morality tale. It took place a few centuries after the Warring States period, when China was unified under the Han Dynasty. Corruption was rampant, although one government official, Yang Zhen, had a reputation for being incorruptible. One time, Yang Zhen was staying at a hotel when he was visited by the local governor who was a protege of his from years prior, and the protege brought him a bribe, which he refused. The protege tried to convince him otherwise, saying, It's the middle of the night, nobody would know. To which Yang Zhen replied, Heaven knows, earth knows, I know, and you know. How could you say nobody knows? Number 4. During the fall of the Han Dynasty and the Three Kingdoms period, one very prominent politician was Kong Rong, a descendant of Confucius himself. Kong Rong liked to say whatever was on his mind, and eventually pissed off the warlord Cao Cao, who in 208 AD had Kong Rong executed. As a child, Kong Rong already had the reputation of having a sharp tongue. When Kong Rong was 10 years old, his dad took him to a party hosted by a high-ranking government official in the capital city. There, the boy made a big scene to show off how smart he was, and the adult guests all went woo and ah at the child prodigy. Another guest arrived some time later and clearly was not impressed when he heard about what the 10-year-old boy had done, and said, Just because he is accomplished now as a child does not mean he will be successful when he grows up. Kong Rong immediately replied, so you must have been brilliant too then when you were a child. Number 5. During the same time period, the warlords Liu Bei and Sun Quan maintained an uneasy alliance with one another. One time, Liu Bei sent an ambassador to Sun Quan, who wanted to publicly talk down the ambassador a little bit. At the official welcoming ceremony, after the ambassador had taken a bow and stood back up, Sun Quan asked the ambassador, What is it like to serve a tyrant? It must be so tiring. Without batting an eye, the ambassador replied, Not tiring at all, sir. All I did was bow down and stand back up. Number 6. 
As a result of the destruction from the fall of the Han Dynasty, many of the elites in society became rather nihilistic and eschewed traditional Confucian etiquettes. One scholar from this time period, Liu Ling, liked to spend his days drinking, and after he got drunk, would walk around his house naked. One day, he showed up drunk and naked in front of his house guests, who were understandably quite upset. Liu Ling talked back to them in his drunken stupor. Heaven and earth are my house. And the rooms in this house are my clothing. What are you guys doing inside my pants? Number seven. A few decades later, northern China was overrun by barbarians, and the court of the Jin Dynasty escaped to the south. During this time, Emperor Yuan of the Jin Dynasty had a newborn son and threw a big party to celebrate. And he gave gifts to everyone who attended the party. One of the ministers at the party wanted to do a little brown nosing, so he walked up to the emperor and said, "Your Majesty." The whole empire is already celebrating the birth of your son. I myself am so humbled to be receiving this special gift from you, even though I have made no contributions whatsoever. The emperor laughed and said, "It's good that you have not made any contributions." Number eight is a two for one. In the mid 500s A.D., the Eastern Wei Dynasty, which ruled over the eastern half of northern China, was under the control of the Gao family, and the emperor was a mere puppet. Chinese history is filled with examples of powerful ministers who mistreated their puppet emperors. Although Gao Cheng, the head of the Gao family, was ridiculous even by the very low bar set by Chinese history. One day at a public event, Gao Cheng made a toast to the emperor in a very disrespectful manner. The emperor became visibly upset and snapped back at Gao Cheng. Every dynasty in history eventually comes to an end anyway, so why should I, the emperor, have to live like this? Gao Cheng was furious at the insubordination and cussed back, "Emperor, emperor, you dog-footed emperor!" He then had one of the imperial secretaries throw three punches at the emperor and then stormed out of the palace. The emperor had finally had enough and so plotted with his confidant to flee the capital and get help elsewhere. Unfortunately, the plot was foiled, and Gao Cheng confronted the emperor, "Your Majesty, why are you rebelling against me?" At this point in the story, you may be feeling pretty angry at Gao Cheng, and you will be glad to hear what happened next. Gao Cheng was eventually assassinated by his chef, whom he had also abused. Even the manner of Gao Cheng's death was rather comical. The chef took a stab at Gao Cheng, which Gao Cheng easily dodged. But in the process of doing so, Gao Cheng injured his foot and became incapacitated. He hid underneath his bed to wait for help, but the chef arrived with accomplices, moved the bed aside, and stabbed Gao Cheng to death. But if you want the story to have a happy ending, don't. After Gao Cheng's assassination, his younger brother Gao Yang took power and quickly usurped the throne. The puppet emperor was eventually murdered along with his sons. That's Chinese history for ya. Number nine. The story is very unlikely to be true, but it's still interesting to tell. During the Tang Dynasty, power was held by the Dowager Empress Wu. Who eventually declared herself the only female sovereign in Chinese history from 690 to 705 A.D. She liked to pass on rather arbitrary laws, and for a while banned the killing of animals because she was a Buddhist. Meat could only be eaten if the animal had already died of non-human causes. This was obviously unenforceable, and people tried all kinds of loopholes. One day, a high-ranking government official went out on business, and the local chef brought him a plate of lamb. Oh, where did this lamb come from? He asked. Sir, a jackal attacked and killed it. That's too bad, then, darn jackals. Looks like I can't let the meat go to waste. Some time later, the chef brought a plate of fish. Where did this fish come from? Sir, a jackal killed it. You idiot! It was a river otter. Okay. And finally, number ten. During the Ming Dynasty in the early 1500s. The philosopher, scholar, and politician Wang Yangming had crushed multiple rebellions against Ming rule and was made a count in recognition of his contributions. This was a very special honor because, per Ming Dynasty tradition, typically only military commanders could be ennobled and not a scholar like Wang Yangming. Because he was now a nobleman of the realm, at court Wang Yangming had to wear a special ceremonial headgear, which looked just as ridiculous back then as it does now. His scholar colleagues made fun of him. And pointing at the silk ribbons hanging next to his ears, asked, "Are your ears cold?" Wang Yangming replied, "No, but your eyes are hot." In Chinese, having hot eyes is an euphemism for being jealous. 
If you have enjoyed this video so far, please hit like and subscribe below to help me grow this channel. Please also feel free to write in the comment section if there are any topics you would like me to discuss in further videos.